You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. We present The Agreement with Norman Newell and Annabelle Williams. Is this the first time you've been back? Sorry? Since it happened? Yes. You had it cleaned? Cleaned? The room? Couldn't get the blood out of the carpet. Where did you find her? In front of the TV. Was the television on? You know, I can't remember. So, shall we go over it once again? Why? You might have remembered something, something that at the time you were too shocked to recall. These things happen. Someone on the discovery of their wife's body is unable to, to collect their thoughts, to put events in the right order, to fully comprehend what really happened. Later on, they recall details lost at the time. Okay. Good. So, you arrived home about 9.30 in the morning, is that correct? Yes. So you came in the door? Yes. And then? I noticed the back door. This was the window? Yes. And you said you saw the glass on the kitchen floor? It was on the floor. Oh, you mean it was knocked inside? Meaning someone broke the door window from the outside? Then what did you do? I saw her. This is Anna. Yes. In front of the TV? As I said. Right. Is there a problem? No. I'd just like to clarify one or two things. Oh. You said you arrived home at 9.30, give or take. 9.30 is what I said? Yes. What's wrong with that? Why didn't you go to the shop? There's an assistant manager. Good stuff. It almost runs itself these days. Also, I had been at a conference the previous night. Uh, yes, I have it here. At the Electrical Wholesalers and Business Planning Conference in Brighton? Yes. Good conference? Yes. What do they talk about at these things? Sorry, I know people hate to talk shop, but I've never been to one. I'm sure I'd be fascinated. (coughs) Domestic products, mostly. Light bulbs, conduit fittings, wiring, insulating coils. Screwdrivers? Yes. Sounds riveting. It's just a job. You didn't come back that night, the night of the conference? No. No, I stayed away. Stayed out. I knew that it would not finish. That's the conference. Would not finish until late. Did Anna have nights out? With girlfriends and stuff? Not often. Why? Why? Well, we all need a break from time to time. Why shouldn't she also enjoy the odd night out away from the homestead? I'm not saying she shouldn't. I see you have a computer in the corner. <coughs> Yeah. I use it for the accounts. That's about all. But doesn't the shop have its own computer? It it does. It's just an older model. This one here in the house has a more up-to-date accounts package. Quite dull, really. You don't surf the superhighway, then? Me? No. No, I wouldn't know how to. It it all seems rather complicated. Not at all. They're very simple to use these days. Are they? Oh, yes. Did you know that you can communicate with people anywhere across the planet? on a computer. Can you? Oh yeah. You can converse on any number of different subjects. Really? Things like uh, sports, for example. Right. Or current events. Everyone does have an opinion. They do. The arts. You could talk to people about the arts, music, theatre, film, the latest releases. I mean, it goes on and on. Sorry. A bit like me, I suppose. No, it's fine. You could also... When she wasn't looking, try a thing called a chat room. What's that? People visit them, talk about sex. Do they? Is it, sorry, uh, was it a happy marriage? I thought so. And she was contented? Whoever is. And how is the shop doing? Is that relevant? I would say so. The shop's doing well. Have the police been in touch? Is that relevant as well? Not since the arrest. What was his name? Peter Holland. That was him? He was seen in the area, outside the house in fact, walking up and down. But no one actually saw him break in, did they? No. Which is strange, when you think about it. Strange? How? Your neighbour, Mrs Robertson. Oh, her? Yes, Mrs Robertson. Bit of a busybody, bit of a nosy parker, to be honest. But you know that, don't you? 
We don't talk very often. But she does like to keep an eye on things, doesn't she? I don't know. You'll have to ask her. What I meant was... It's all right, I understand. Whatever you do, she's always there. Always spying on you. Come in late at night from the pub. And you've been there a lot recently, I know. And she sees you. Have an argument with your wife, Anna, and she's listening at the door. Sweep up outside the kitchen, and she's there, peeking out from behind the curtains. You understand what I'm telling you. Do you understand, Chris? Yes, I understand. I spoke to your bank yesterday. Oh. Shop's not doing so well, is it? We've had lean times before. Yes, yes, you have. But never according to the manager quite like this. What would he know? He's never run a business. He just lends money. But he's not prepared to lend you any more, is he? The shop is at the end of a rather long rope, isn't it? I'll bounce back. Yes, yes, I'm sure you will. I'm sure this is little more than a temporary setback. Only it has gone on for quite some time now, hasn't it? It's tough all round. You've laid off staff. Suppliers have stopped sending you stock and you've no more reserves from the bank. Next month the bank will call in the loan and the shop will be finished. You've done your research. I've been a busy girl. Yes, haven't you? Did you know that when you were at the shop trying desperately to shift the remains of your outdated electrical stock, Anna was on the internet, surfing the world wide web? If you say so. I do. I checked. I bet you did. Do you know where she went on the computer? I bet you're going to tell me. Chat rooms. She liked to flirt with other men. Did she? Rather prolific, your wife. And you should see what she used to say to these other men. I was shocked. Convent educated, was she? No. Oh, I must have got that wrong. Then you don't know everything, do you? I know she ran up debts on your credit cards. Everyone's got debts these days. But you cannot afford to pay. Am I wrong? No. How big are the debts? That depends. On what? On how many credit cards you found. So, you had the shop, and she the credit cards? Yes. And the chat rooms? Yes, thank you. And Mrs Robertson? Mrs Robertson? Your neighbour? I know who she is. I know you do. What has she to do with my wife's enjoyment of free credit? Nothing. Good. I didn't suggest she knew anything about you or your wife's financial arrangements. Right. But she did... Hear the breaking of the back door window. Did she? You'd be amazed at just how thin her curtains are. Would I? See through. That's one way to describe them. She only had to go to the top bedroom window of her house and look down. Can you guess what she might have seen? Chris? No. I can't guess what she might have seen through her see-through curtains. You, Chris. She saw you, sweeping up the broken glass and bringing it inside your house to make it look, some might say, that the window was broken from the outside. Is that what she said? That is what she said. I wonder why she'd do that. You better ask her. I wonder why you'd sweep it up. I had to clear the mess up later. But this was before the police arrived. In fact, this was about two hours before the police even heard from you checked that out as well, did you? One likes to be thorough. There's only one problem with your synopsis. Oh? And what would that be? I wasn't here when Anna was killed. Oh, yes. Your conference for electrical goods. And whatever, as I said, it sounded intriguing. You've got to be in the trade. Do you have a mobile phone? Doesn't everyone these days. You do? I've lost mine. You see, the reason I ask, Chris, is because mobile phones these days contain GPS tracking systems. In other words, find the mobile phone and we'll know where you were at the time of your wife's death. You see my point? But as you say, you've lost it. Gone. Vanished. Disappeared. Except it hasn't really gone because your mobile phone company allowed us, as it is a criminal case, to check the location of the phone, and therefore you, on the night in question. Can you guess what that told me? 
No. That you were here and not at the conference, not in the morning, but the night before. You told the police that Anna must have died no later than 9.30 because that is when you arrived home, but you were already here. And she must have died, bludgeoned to death in fact, no later than 5.30 according to the post-mortem because rigor mortis had already started to set in. Let me tell you, Chris, what I think probably happened. You found out about Anna's hobby on the chat rooms, her spending on the credit cards, one of which was for a weekend break away with, well, not you, I'm afraid. And on top of that, your electrical store is just about to go to the wall. The conference was drawing near, gave you the excuse to be away, to be in two places at once, so you drove down to Brighton, showed your face around, argued with one of the stall holders about the price of light bulbs and fittings just so you'd be remembered and then drove back arrived in the early hours confronted Anna you argued and you struck her about the temple with a blunt instrument a large screwdriver possibly whatever it was it was never found should the police dredge the river on the other side of town just a thought then I think the realisation of what you had done hit you. It then took until 9.30, four hours later, before you broke the back door window and phoned the police with the story of the conference and that of a mysterious intruder who just happened to be in the area. Peter Holland, local tearaway on day release as it happened, just visiting his aged mother. He claims miscarriage of justice, which is possible, but ticks all of the boxes on the charge sheet. And then you put in a claim on your wife's life insurance policy. And the insurance company sent an investigator to check it out, just like you said they would. I did. All you have to do is sign it off, and we'll split the money 50-50. Yes. I could do that. How much was your wife insured for again? 250,000. That is what you told me. But you actually insured her for over one million pounds. I must have forgotten. We are so often told about the opportunities that came from female emancipation, but as far as I can see, it was just one more step in oversubscribing the workplace and therefore reducing the wages for all. My life, Chris, is about more than producing a profit on a corporate balance sheet. What is this about, Rachel? Retirement, Chris. This was always about my retirement. Your retirement? I have no intention of working until my death. Working until 66 is not my idea of a good usage of my time. So... You're suggesting we take the money, sell the shop, and move to the south of France? No. Then what is your plan? I'm assuming you have one. That is why we've met today. You never do anything without having thought it all out beforehand. I'm suggesting I retire to some place warm while you sell up your shop and pay off your debts. And how are you going to do this? You're going to marry me. Set up a joint account but with only one checkbook and one card, both in my name. And you'd trust me to do that? As they say, Chris, to lose one wife may be seen as unfortunate, but to lose two... Lightning rarely strikes twice, but if it ever did, questions would certainly be asked. Like who knew about the lad on day release visiting his sick mother? You mean those kind of questions? We either swim together, Chris, or we sink together. It's your choice. So you get the money. And you, your freedom. So what do I have to say to that? Say you agree. I do. In the agreement, Annabelle Williams played Rachel, and Norman Newell was Chris. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson, and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. The Agreement is an audio production for Political Art 2.0.